going to work on the spreadsheet called the GPA spreadsheet. GPA stands for grade point average. Hopefully during class yesterday, or if you didn't finish it in class, you did it as homework, you've had a chance to bring your spreadsheet to the point like what you see on your screen right now. In a moment, there's a couple of things I want to mention about working efficiently and trying to make the fewest amount of mistakes as you can on a spreadsheet. And again, I just want to keep reinforcing, watch the video, rewind, replay the video as you need to, and read the instructions at Schoology. It's really important. Everything that I laid out was in the greatest of detail. And if you missed something, maybe you were distracted or you didn't watch the video or read the words. So keep doing that and you'll, you'll get this. And one other thing that I want to point out to you guys too, when you have a cell selected, I've just clicked on cell B10 tech slash art slash PE. You'll notice that the cell is highlighted and there's a small little box in the lower right hand corner. If you're ever going to go and select a range of cells, don't click on this little box. It seems as though sometimes our eye is attracted to it and we want to go and click and drag. And that has a different meaning. It's going to do something different. If you want to select a range of cells, click in the middle and drag and that range of cells will become selected. The little box is called a drag and drop method of copy and paste. If I go to the little box and it turns into a crosshair, I can now click. And if I move my pointer to a certain cell and let go, it's like copying and pasting. And that can really throw you off if you're not aware of that. So don't get attracted to that unless if you're going to use it. To the GPA spreadsheet of one that's finished, this is one from last year. Ours looks a little bit different because of our new schedule this year. We're going to focus today on two parts of the spreadsheet. One of them is adding in trimester one, trimester two, and trimester three. And then we're going to add in another uh, part where there's some borders there. And I'll get to that in just a few moments. Whether or not you choose to do the method that I choose for trimester one, two, and three, that's up to you. But I want to show you a nice use of the drag and drop box. Take a look here how trimester one fills up cells E3 and F3. If you participated in class yesterday, you know that I could select cells E3 and F3. And if I want to merge those two cells to become one cell, I'd simply go on the toolbar to the merge button and it's now one cell. You may not have noticed when I was there, but we're going to type in trimester one. What you might not have noticed is that it was in bold. It was centered. It was filled with orange. Not too long from now, you're going to have trimester one uh, bold, centered, and orange like I do in the merged cells of E3 and F3. Now you could do that for G3 and H3, as well as I3 and J3 for trimester two and trimester three, or something neat, really neat happens if you use the little box down here, the drag and drop box. If I were to click on the drag and drop box right now and drag it over to J3 and let it go, and if I asked you to predict what might happen, you might say it's gonna copy it's going to say trimester one and trimester one and trimester one, but something better happens. The spreadsheet's pretty smart. When I let go of the mouse, it just knows that I probably want trimester two and trimester three. I'm going to click undo and I'm going to show you that process one more time. You can also replay the video. Once you have trimester one in place, it's really quite simple. Place the pointer over the drag and drop box. Click and drag to the last cell here, which is J3. Release the mouse. And that should happen for you if you do it correctly. Would you please pause the video and add in trimester one, two, and three. Reporting back one more time to a spreadsheet where you can kind of see where we're going here. Hopefully by now you've got trimester one, trimester two and three, as well as some of the other things that are in there. Uh, one more thing that we're going to work on today is putting this table where I'm moving my pointer where you have grade and points. 
anytime when you look at PowerSchool Portal, one of 12 different grades might appear all the way from A down through a grade that I don't even want to talk about. But what we're going to do is we're going to use borders from cell A12 through B24. Uh, you're going to see me go ahead and um, type some stuff in there with some headings and some labels. And then I'm going to invite you to do this too. Uh, you'll notice some things are centered and filled with different colors. And mine's actually going to be just a little bit different than this one. So I want you to watch along. And when there's the pause in the video, would you please add in this table right here? That's really awesome. There's really just one more thing that I'd like for you to do before we wrap up our spreadsheet work for today and switch over to some typing. I asked you earlier to leave your grades open, open from PowerSchool. Now, maybe you were able to memorize your grades. What I'd like you to do is in column E, underneath the letter grade for each of the classes, I'd like you to enter in your grades. Um, I'm just going to put some grades in here, and these are not real grades. You would put your real grades in for math. Suppose a student has an A-, minus, and for science, maybe they have a B. In English, they're doing quite well. They have an A. Social studies, maybe they forgot to turn something in. It's a C- minus right now. It's just, just the grade right now. And then in tech, uh, they've turned both things in, they're doing awesome, and they have an A in that class as well. If you uh, have a chance, the only other thing is wherever the remaining cells are, and I'm going to select this range of cells, I've gone from cell E5 through J10. If you were to turn on centering so that those grades become centered, and anything we type in the rest of the spreadsheet would also be centered. Would you add in your grades? Take them from PowerSchool. It doesn't mean that your grade stays that forever. As grades change, we'll change what your spreadsheet says. Um, add in your grades and then get ready. We're going to be switching over to typing.com. Today, when we're finished with the spreadsheet work, you're going to see part three at Schoology. And there's just a few reminders that I want you to take a look at and think about and then watch this video also as we head off into typing.com. First, you want your fingertips to be based on the home row keys. A, S, D, F, J, K, L, semicolon. You get your thumbs resting lightly on the space bar, a little curve to your wrist and a little curve to your fingers. Try to not be off of the home row. I see kids, sometimes their fingers are spaced way further out or they're just on the wrong keys. Um, sometimes they're above or below the home row. You really want to focus on keeping that home row piece there. If you make a mistake, sometimes you have to take that right pinky to the backspace key. At typing.com to advance through the lesson, you want to press the enter key. And both those things are done with your pinky. Do not worry about speed. Right now, it doesn't matter if you can type fast. What matters is that you can type with proper technique. Finally, a couple things that I want you to see at typing.com. Make sure that you're signed in. You should see your name up here in the account area. If you're not signed in, it won't record your progress. So each day when you come back, you want to see the progress that you've made. I'm hoping by now you've had a chance to finish JF in space and you are in K. Today, I'd like you to get started on DENI. I've already done this lesson quite a few times. I'd like you to continue going through the lesson as much as you can, maybe even finish it before you leave today. We'll see. We'll see how much time is left. As I'm moving my pointer over these screens, you'll see some stars that show up. When you see three stars right there, that means that when I did this, I earned all three stars. What I'd like you to do is this. As you go through a lesson, 
I want you to do well, but if you don't earn all three stars, go to the next screen anyway. And if you don't earn all three stars, again, go to the next screen. Keep going through until you finish the lesson. After a lesson is finished, you can go back and find a screen where you didn't have three stars. Notice I even changed to UR and K, or even if I go and check out JF and space. Any place that you don't have three stars, you can click on that screen and you can redo it again. So if I didn't have three stars here on letters J and F, I could simply go back in, uh, do it, and it would record those three stars. So yeah, we'd love for you to have three stars all the time, but make sure you finish a lesson first and then go back. Now, would you please begin D, E, and I, even if you haven't finished the first two, get going on D, E, and I and get as far as you can today. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.